Everybody and welcome to the Sci-Fi Sister Podcast. I am Sabrina Wood, and I'm joined today by my sister, Yvette Blackman-Tom. Hello. Hey, Yvette, we are here today to talk about some really big fun that we had at Trek Long Island. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we don't have our other two sisters here, but you're going to see one of our sisters in, like, the spotlight in a second. Well, here. We're going to hear her. <laughs> you're going to hear her. You're going to hear her. <laughs> Hear her here. <laughs> right here. Right, right here. Right now. <laughs> so Trek Long Island is quick becoming just about my favorite con ever. What about you? Yeah, yeah it's definitely, I, I think I've made that comment that this Trek Long Island is our con. Um, it's definitely made for our sensibilities. <laughs> um, it's the East Coast. That's the great part. It's all Trek. Like it's not uh, Trek. But then everybody else can come also, that type of thing. Right. It's purely Trek. And it's Trek for a, a very diverse, the diver diverse group, the IDIC group of, of Trek fans. Oh, yeah. Know. Everybody was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're lovers of Trek in every iteration, which I totally love. There's no poo-pooing on any iteration of Trek. It's all about the love of the franchise, you know, which yes. I adore. Yeah. And, I, and, and of course, we love Stephanie. You know. Yes. And of course, you know, only, you know, two. And that's another thing about this convention. Yeah. There's a lot of books, even lot of books. though there yeah. are, you know, all kinds of panels, you know, main room, there's main stage, there's a couple of uh, panel rooms and something is going on in all of them. There's a kid track. Yeah. Uh, there's a science track. Yep. It is just a lot going on. But mm -hmm. um, hang on for next year. Let's get it going again. It, I love it. It's just full days, so much fun. Mm -hmm. And I and everybody's there. Like a lot of the stars are there. We met some of the Discovery people. Yeah. And, and oh, man, I'm telling you, hanging out with them too, man. And they got our fans. Right. They loved, they love loved our church fans. They did. <laughs> so yeah. what we have today for you as a, is a really special treat. If you didn't get to be at Trek Long Island and see this particularly great panel hosted by none other than sci-fi sister Tamia. Mm -hmm. So uh, here we are. It is called Drawn Together, Lower Decks and Prodigy Spotlight. And it featured our good friends, Bonnie, Bonnie Gordon. Mm -hmm. And our new best friend, Gabrielle Weiss. Yes. And Gabrielle, I met her in the elevator. Like, oh. we were going to the elevator, and, like, I, I knew her face. Gabrielle, if you don't know, plays Taylin Tay in uh, Lower Decks. Mm -hmm. And Bonnie is the voice of the computer in Prod Prodigy. Mm -hmm. And so these two women <laughs> were supposed to give us, like, a thing about, I don't know, animation or whatever. But it turned into a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> And Tamia, you did a great job mm -hmm. hosting this. Great questions, great, great questions. That that was what really kicked off some really fun conversations. I was in the audience. I was the sister in the room. <laughs> but I tell you, I was rolling. <laughs> yeah, because both of them are pretty, pretty good comedians. They have uh, great comedic timing, both of them. Oh um, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I knew Tamia was going to be able to. Uh, to moderate those two because they they can definitely hold 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 their own you know they don't need to be prodded or anything like that you know and she could and they're pretty they're pretty quick witted which I love about both of them they yeah. they just stole the afternoon I'm telling Imagine. you and the audience was loving every minute of it so I can't, I can't wait to hear it because I didn't get to you know I was at the I was at the our vendor table so this is yeah be you a treat and for me. yeah yeah we're man gonna, and I the vendor wait. table. That's it. That's it. And thank you for joining for uh, coming to our vendor table out there. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right. So without any further ado, here we go with the interview of Tamia Harper talking to uh, Bonnie Gordon and Gabrielle Reese at Drawn Together Lower Decks and Prodigy Spotlight. Yay! Hey, everybody! What's up, Trek Long Island fans? Hey! Hi. 
I'm Tamia from the Sci-Fi Sisters, and I'm so whoop, whoop, and I'm so excited to be here today. This is going to be a great panel for our favorite animated shows. We're going to be talking some Star Trek Lower Decks in the house. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> And some Star Trek Prodigy. Yes. Our delightful favorites we didn't know we needed. And to help us talk about them, I have two incredible women here today. First up on the stage, you know her from my crazy ex-girlfriend and also is the voice of Talyn on Star Trek Lower Decks. Give it up for Gabrielle Ruiz. <laughs> Yeah, grab anyone. One of them doesn't have a mic. I mean, he doesn't have an on-off on switch. Fascinating. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I chose the blue one for the uniform, of course. <laughs> All about matching. And our other favorite voice of the computer, new to our family, and so beloved. We love her so much. Everybody welcome Miss Bonnie Gordon. <laughs> Representing the Star Trek prodigy. What's up, ladies? Also fascinating. <laughs> I was like, oh no, Vulcans and computers. We're one and the same. Pretty much one of the same. Acknowledged. <laughs> Red alert. You probably auditioned for Talyn. I yeah. probably auditioned for the computer. See? See? The crossover is amazing. That is amazing, because I was actually, that's going to be a question coming up later. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Well, this is my first time being able to sit down with the two of you. And I mean, first of all, I'm really um, geeking out. So just so you know, I might be looking a little bit cool, but I'm t hardcore geeking right now. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I've been told we're the most animated ones here. Uh, uh, but I'm found. Uh, still got it. <laughs> So um, I wonder, I think there might be some people who perhaps haven't heard this question. I know you've been asked it a million times, but just in case somebody doesn't know, can you guys give us a little bit of an introduction into your uh, first contact with Star Trek? That's a great question. Do you want me to go first? I'll go first. You go first. Sure. Oh, <laughs> fight for it. Fight for it. Okay. Paper, rock, scissors. Okay. Um, I was ready. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is I um, used to fall asleep watching TNG with my mom. My mom is a big Trekkie, and my dad would go and have to summer in West Texas. I'm from Texas. He had to summer in West Texas for work. Uh, for like two to three months out of the year. So we would bunk with my mom in the main bedroom and she would watch Star Trek to sleep. Yes, everyone, yes. Yes. You know that story? It's the ship noise. Yes, yes. it is. It's, it's the really engines. relaxing. It's yeah. Jordy just like explaining everything that's just like, uh, you know. And so um, I have loved it ever since. So when I called her that I booked a Vulcan, it was an epic, epic moment. Oh my God, did she? Did yes. She, <laughs> she was did like, she scream? hold on. I was like, because I don't tell them what I auditioned for because I didn't get it hap happens a lot and my dad will like curse God and you know wonder why and he asked me too many questions like dad I don't know I don't know why but I so I call them make sure they're both on the phone when something does happen like this and like crazy ex-girlfriend and other things and so um, it was it was really fun my mom was like hold on let me press pause I'm watching Deep Space Nine okay <laughs> what are you talking about yes. Gabrielle I was like well this is perfect <laughs> How much do we love your mother? <laughs> we love her very much. <laughs> My family knows nothing of Star Trek. I'm like the black sheep of the family, meaning I'm, I'm the nerd, and they don't understand any of my my interests or likes but I was a big fantasy sci-fi geek but didn't really get into Star Trek till I, li I lived in Vegas and I was part of the closing cast of Star Trek The Experience Yay! yes I was one of the actors in that and they hired me I, I did the audition I improved everything I had no idea what I was doing and the, the person hiring me goes we're hiring you I don't know why please watch Star Trek because you, you can't use the prime directive as an excuse every time someone asks, asks you a question. And I was like, but I can. Uh, I was like, I cannot answer that. It'll break the prime directive. And he was, he was like, there's only so many times you can repeat that before they just go, this person has no idea what she's talking about. Uh, so I started watching Star Trek as research and fell in love with it. And then uh, on Geek and Sundry was a part of Shield of Tomorrow, the Star Trek, yes, yeah, hello. Uh, this is the Star Trek TTRPG show of Star Trek Adventures. I was Lark Sage, did that for two years. There's 
way too many episodes on YouTube of that. And then uh, pulled every possible stream to get the audition when I heard that there were animated series happening. Uh, probably not the right way to to audition. I, I was, because I didn't have a voiceover agent at the time. Even though I did voiceovers professionally for 15 years, I was unrepresented voiceover-wise. So I... You made it happen, girl. Oh, I did. That's I manifested that right. really hard. You better. That's what you call it. Yeah, I'm so happy. I, I brought. I was brought in for Gwen. So, oh, wow. initially for for Prodigy, and recorded eight episodes of as Gwen, and then did all the scratch for Janeway, and then they were like, and now you're a computer. I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my start in Star Trek. I digress. I had a lot of coffee. I'm so sorry. I love it. I love it. I need, I'm going to feed off of that coffee yeah. energy. Okay. Take I mean, it. Please take it. <laughs> All right, so here's a question that I like to ask uh, people because for me, and I think for a lot of us fans, Star Trek is so impactful in our everyday lives and how we carry ourselves and how we treat other people in the world. Um, I'm interested to know from you guys what is a, probably the most significant thing that you have learned from doing your roles or, and, or from being part of the Trek family, either one. I love this question. Um, it is an honor to be a Latina Vulcan. Yes, yes. Right? I mean, the diversity there, I don't think it's, I mean, from the actors, the other actors who have played Vulcans, it's, I think, I think people have told me I'm the first. Is that correct? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. You guys know more than me, maybe not. But yeah, um, you know. as a female Vulcan, I'm just going to own it. <laughs> Viva la Latina Vulcan, you know? And so um, that's definitely an honor in the being, you know, how inclusive and diverse the Star Trek world already has been and is even thriving more so in these generations is spectacular. So it's, it's an honor. It's wonderful. What I love about, you know, being a multifaceted nerd and going to comic cons and gaming conventions and anime conventions and seeing all the different types of fandoms nothing beats the trekkies it's and i am not i am yeah. not saying this because you're all sitting in here <laughs> yes there's a lot of crossover i know a lot of you are like dnd what represent but you know you a lot of you are are multifaceted nerds as well but there is something about the trek community that is so special and so accepting of people who are different and us wanting to actually create what the federation stands for um, you know, you hear about toxic fandoms and gatekeeping. I really feel like the Star Trek community embraces everyone, no matter what show you're, you love, what characters you connect with. And the, the amount of charity work that the Star Trek actors and the community does, you know, Billingsley is a perfect example. Chase is a perfect example. There's so many, Armin, there's so many charities that everyone's connected to. And you all show up. You show up, like, physically, with your wallets, uh, online. Like, you are all, like, getting emotional. Again, coffee. Uh, (laughs) Lack of sleep and coffee. You all are so special. Uh, And being able to come as a fan and then be a part of the other side and seeing it from both sides and seeing how much the actors really care for all of you like none of us would be here without all of you and that goes with a lot of the charity work that all of you do a lot of the charity work that they believe in you keep it going and you keep the i the roddenberry vision of of what starfleet is and what it stands for alive so give your yourselves a round of applause because you, the, there's nothing like star trek fans nothing was that did that answer the question i, I concur okay oh, yeah. right i think that was the question it's good stuff man well said. it's good stuff it's true like <laughs> i mean the sci-fi sisters you know the with the, like hollywood food coalition and stuff the amount of work that they do and put in and the amount of work that the, the community comes in and and shows up for like y'all are unbelievable unbelievable Thank you for being you. Yes. And, and, and accepting everyone. Thank you for just, yeah. It's Do true. that. Do the thing. That's right. Do the thing. Do that Starfleet thing. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. You spell it T-H-A-N-G. Do that thing. Do that thing. Do that thing. Yes. Do that Starfleet thing. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Make note of that, Sabrina. 
Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, collab, collab. (laughs) Okay, so Gabrielle, I've got a question for you. Tell me. Okay, because I came late to my crazy ex-girlfriend, right? So I'm not a person who (laughs) naturally wants to watch a lot of singing in my, in my, in my fun, right? My, and my friends like Lawrence and people are like, how do you even know me? Because I'm a performer and this is what I do. But have you want... seen her do yoga? <laughs> I saw the yoga. <laughs> but Valencia, that character, like she was crazy and she was wonderful. And I mean, I thought she was so spectacular and weird and lovable and real and odd. Like she was just Thank all this you. mix. <laughs> she was so cool. And then we got to great re- character arc too. Yeah, like right. Really, yeah, she grew. Because oh at first bitch, you're like, guys. oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody else out here watched my crazy ex girlfriend? It's so good. Right? If Watch you it. haven't, it's right? fine. It's on yeah, Netflix that's, forever. Yeah, that's where Start I was going with saying that. Like, because like I that show got me hooked, right? I I started watching one episode and I was like, "Mm, singing, I don't know. And then I was like, okay, but they're actually singing well and it makes sense and it's funny. Oh, this is very dark and funny. It's really dark and funny, right? It's a good point. (laughs) It's a great show. So I want to know what would Valencia Will Valencia cross over into Star Trek? No, I'm kidding. Is that your question? That would be so cool. (laughs) I could see her on Lower Decks. Um, what I was going to say, what would Valencia think about Talen? How would she react? And, and would there be a chance for them to be friends? Oh my gosh, like real friends? Yeah. Like, or do like, you mean like the universe of Valencia watching Star Trek and becoming a Trekkie? That's where I was going. <laughs> like her wife, Beth, would have been like, what are you watching? And she's like, you've got to start from the top. Because that kind of happened with Philip, my husband. I had just shared that my mom's a Trekkie because he always puts on Star Wars and then like walks out of the room. <laughs> Which maybe a lot of us understand. He just feels the force. He just, from and the I'm other... like, why? I was like, why are we watching this again? Like, where are, like, what's the, I can never follow the storyline. And, and he just like presses play and walks away. And I'm like, that's enough. You need to, you need to learn, child. Sit down, hold my beer, and learn what Star Trek is. Welcome to this universe. And I sat him down. And we started with TOS, of course. Yes. And then you start with, like, the beginning. It's a very good place to start. And we just got hooked all over again. So I feel like, and I got to rewatch it again with him, like me as well as an adult versus with my mom. So this is before all of Lower Decks was booked for me, too. So I feel like Valencia and Beth would go through that as well. Like, what are you doing? Have a seat. And Beth would introduce it to her, and she would be hooked. Yeah. Signed, sealed, delivered. And I think she would, I was talking to someone earlier about Valencia versus Talin, like comparisons and contrasts. And um, I really think they're the same kind of entity and vibe. And she was saying that they're completely different. I was like, hold on, honestly, I think that they're both sarcastic, they're both shade, and they're both honest. You know, they're just like honest beings of their own planets. And that can either get them into trouble, be out of control, or at the same time be respected and also feared. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Valencia would totally get that. Now, would she be like in the Star Trek world? <laughs> <laughs> I think she really likes her little queendom in West Covina. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She likes to rule like the that queen pond. of her own planet. The queen something. of her own yeah. planet. She already is there, whatnot. But I do feel for me as an actress, the straight man character is what my niche is where I play not necessarily monotone, Mm -hmm. but like Daria or straight up just kind of right. Like just like straight up. I, I get the lines that you don't because the writing is so well done that you don't have to enforce any more anything into it and just trust the writing. They trust me as an actor and it just rings bells and and hilarity. So Valencia and Talon do that. I think for everybody. I agree. Yeah. I, I love them both. I love both those characters. Go ahead, Bonnie. I was, I was thinking, speaking of uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, I haven't thought about this in years, but when it went off the air, I wrote a song and posted it uh, to Rachel Bloom, and it was I'm like, uh, can we please have more shows like Crazy Ex-Girlfriend so I can get cast on TV? <laughs> it is fun and diverse and casts women with curves, with musical numbers and heartwarming scenes. <laughs> 
since it's gone off the air, there's a hole in my heart that can only be filled by Rachel. So can we please have more shows like Crazy Ex-Girlfriend? Nothing really rhymes with Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> she, she wrote that guy like, Thanks. Like, she, I think it, was like, it was like a very like, like dot, 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 question mark. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was beautiful. Well, yeah. Both of you all have beautiful voices, you know, I mean, singing voices as well as speaking voices, you know, I mean, and you're like vocal acrobats and I love that. But did you ever have any aspirations to bring singing into your roles in Star Trek? I'm NDA. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> I like that. Oh, NDA. That's a very good answer. Yeah, NDA. Sure. (laughs) Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we just got our notice. (laughs) So, well, also, I mean, I I do bring it in because I because of the parody stuff I do. Yeah. Like the you know now you got the bridge spot. Kirk is away. Like I I find my own way of of sharing my love of music and my, my my share of nerdy like fandoms so you know it, it, it's hard watching the Strange New Worlds musical episode I was like ah, uh-huh. ah so why? jelly so jelly <laughs> I know, I know. and um, then you know being a quirky nerdy redhead I'm like when you're singing Discovery I'm like Telly why <laughs> you take my role like you know like so I'm kind of like trying to you know find a back in, the back door that sounded dirty a way a way to like continue you know being in the space but also you know, keeping the music, the humor, the the love of Star Trek, my own way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, Vulcans are very good singers. Yes. So, yes, I will always say yes. Music to like, you is know, math. Maybe, you know, like a movie of Lower Decks, just putting it out there. Oh, I'm saying. Yes. Right? Right? Maybe. Um, but one thing to say as a singer, technically speaking, I love looking at the lines like sheet music. Because it's not necessarily had it's it's you know when when you're putting on something on screen you're present with the other person like that person you know you have to really pay attention to, and then when it comes to just being in a studio with nobody yes the answer is nobody else is in the room with you with all the scenes I just met Tawny this February, um, I know right wow. and and wow. they they just they put it all together later um, you have to. Trust your rhythm, trust your speed, and also trust, specifically for Vulcan, like like an AI robot or computer, what the what the resonance, the sound, the tonality, the volume, the, you know, all of the the rhythm of what it is to be known, and then make it your own. And um, it was a lot of audible memory. I think that would make sense of what Leonard Nimoy created for Vulcan. And then you have to, so I tell people, like, you know, what do I do to prepare? This might be a terrible actor answer, but it's true. It's like, what would Jesus do? It's what would Spock say? Or how would Spock say it? And then I say it. That's a t-shirt. And I told Brad, I told Brad, uh, Winters, our our, um, producer, who I recorded a lot of the episodes of To Lynn with. He's so awesome. I know, he's so awesome. And I told him, I was like, that's definitely how I'm, I just literally envision a scene in TOS of him saying this line. And then I say it. I just copy and paste exactly that way. So as a musician, I think that makes sense. It does. I yeah. feel like in, in voiceover in general, and you've done other things in video games, a music background, even if you're not a singer, studying music and taking voice lessons is such a, a help mm-hmm. for vocal voiceover jobs. You know, as a computer, I don't get to do very much. Mm-hmm. There's no improv, mm-hmm. even though I've tried. And they've, they vetoed <laughs> that pretty like, quick. They're like, thank you so much, Bonnie, but yeah, yeah, yeah. stick to the lines. Thank you. <laughs> Admiral Janeway's like, do I have access to this? And I'm like, no. <laughs> They're like, that's not a line. I'm like, it is now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go away. <laughs> Janeway. The right way, the wrong way, the Janeway. Uh, but no, so... But... Especially when it comes to like video games and anime, we're giving a very specific time, we're giving flap, and it becomes like a music game. It becomes a rhythm. We have to match our voices to the lips. Not quite, per se, in Lower Decks and, and Prodigy because the, the animation's done after, yeah. as, as far as I know. I'm, I'm not in Lower Decks. I don't know. But a musical background also helps with your pitch, your tone, uh, breathing correctly. 
screaming correctly. So many voiceover actors ruin their vocal cords by, you know, taking jobs. I talk, with, I'm gonna smack you. Talk, I talk with my hand a lot. Uh, but like doing like the ha, 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 you know, fight scenes. Or the zombie stuff. The zombie stuff. They ruin their voice, like after the first session, because they don't know how to do it properly. And a music background comes in handy. Not being a good singer. You don't have to be a good singer. Just study your voice. It's an instrument. It's a muscle. And uh, I feel like being a singer has helped me tremendously doing VO. That's such a good point. All that from the diaphragm, projecting, yeah. knowing how to modulate. Don't, I love Going that. Going way up here. Yeah. You're like, so way up here. <laughs> Going way down here. Yes. I haven't booked that one yet, but I will. I know it. Right? <laughs> Going way She's down. down there. I don't, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> I don't I know. She's, she's, she like, is down there. I'm ready, I'm ready to book that one. No. I'm like, I don't know how you guys feel, but I could watch this all day. <laughs> you should have been I'm at the good. story time with the kids. That was, I, I like, I don't, I don't even know. They were just like, now do Allison what? Like, do, they were just throwing <laughs> voices at me. It was fun. It was like a free acting class that was, for yourself. That was, yeah. <laughs> so, me and five-year-olds. Are the, the processes for you guys recording, like on the different shows, are they similar or are there a lot of differences? I mean, you guys, you mentioned not being recording together, uh-huh. you know, like. Well, especially after COVID, so many of the studio regulations have changed. Um, I've been on a few shows with Cartoon Network where the entire cast is in a recording session together and it, the energy's there. It's so much fun. You know, it's like we're bouncing off each other, we're laughing. But then n- now it's very, again, all by yourself. Uh, I, I recorded all of Prodigy season one from my bedroom because we were in lockdown. And, um, you know, so every now and then if you hear like a red alert and like, meow, like a cat, that's my cat. You know, he's like, he's like, me too, me too. He's, um, didn't, I guess he didn't know. Yappa is famous. Uh, but yeah. It, it, Did you get him a Coogan account? <laughs> he has a cameo. If you want. <laughs> But yeah, I feel like uh, it's, it's changed a lot. The industry's changed a lot. Uh, you know, a lot of it's done remotely because of, of COVID regulations. And um, it, it's lonely because you are just acting, you know, not just with these shows, just in any voiceover. You're just, you have to, you have nothing there to work with. And uh, so you do have to, it's a lot of imagination. It's a lot of, uh, it's an imagination exercise and improv exercise and, you uh, just hoping that you're getting what their intention is. If you don't know what happened in the scene before, you're like, I hope this is right. And Well, I love not talking to anybody. I love not interacting with anybody. Okay, well, that's great. <laughs> no, but it's, um, it, it is interesting to not be bouncing off and even a table read, for instance, yeah. like just sitting down and reading the script. The writers, the producers, the creators, Mike, everybody just trusts everyone's role from the beginning to the end. Um, I, I enjoy taking, you know, one set of lines three times in a row, so you can give them three variations. And um, we don't work with a director hand in hand the way you work with a director on screen or on Broadway and theater. It's just such a different relationship. So they take those three sets of lines that the producers make sure that we're capturing the idea and they pick them later and then sew them all together. I think that's so neat. And so um, I feel like with Lower Decks, the animation solidifies. I'm sure there's storyboards already created. But the animation does definitely start coming into full once they hear us. So we're part of the inspiration. It's and, incredible. Oh, sorry. And then like this Wednesday coming up, I feel like it's my last session with Lower Decks. You guys, yes, Aww. let us lament. Um, where we're just fi- filling patches. Like, there's, like, a few holes here and there that either the editing now needs to match or the rewording needs to match and whatnot, and I will savor it. I'm very sad, just so you know. Yeah. With Lower Decks, the timing is so fast. So, like, kudos to the actors, the editors, the animation team. The, the show is the speed and the, and the back and forth. The fact that they are not in a room together and able to back and forth like that it's like they all know each other so well they know their characters so well so kudos to you and the rest of the cast because as a VO actor I'm just like that is just so impressive you guys are just on it constantly and the timing is perfect and yeah yeah they definitely are like that was great Gabrielle can you just do it faster (laughs) 
Yeah, oh, it's that always does, about being faster. That does yeah, faster yeah. We have 22 minutes to pack a full hour episode. <laughs> that actually does deserve a round of applause because Lower Decks is our jam. You know, I think I think I speak for many of us here when I say save Lower Decks, just like we saved Pack Prodigy, Lower right? Decks. Lower Y'all Decks. saved Lower Prodigy, Decks. though. Seriously, you actually did. You actually did. They did. You really did. Lower Decks. Lower Decks. Lower Decks. <laughs> yes. I concur. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> we did that last year because I was like, come on, guys. Did it. <laughs> It worked, yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're an incredibly powerful fan base, you know? So, we can do this. Just get you know? a plane. Fly it over Netflix. It worked for us. Uh, you see do what it, I'm saying? Do it, do it. Come That's on, they they plane, plane people. I know. It's I know. crazy. <laughs> it's like, there's a plane. Okay, so I'm going to ask, I, I have two final questions before we open it up to um, questions from the audience. So, you guys start thinking about your questions. Make them good ones, okay? One question per person, all right? Y'all, one. Don't be coming up here if, like, I have a five-part question. Subsection A. Just come to our tables if you have one of those. Come to our tables. (laughs) Okay, so for Gabrielle, you know, if we are able to save lower decks, I think there should be no if in that statement. When When, we save lower decks... Are there, uh, do you see, you have a desire for any particular types of storylines you would like to see for Tulane? Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. Let's kick it up a notch. Yes, baby. She's already out of control. I mean. (laughs) That should just be a short in itself. It should be its own thing. Like, its own thing. Obviously, I've thought about this. (laughs) Um, I... I, I would love to see, of course, more backstory of Talyn, what brought her to the moment of putting her foot down with that gut instinct on Cheval. You know, yeah. like, what brought her there? Um, what was her training years like? Was she always... When, when did the switch happen? You know, as an actor, you love to know, like, when did that switch happen for the conflict? Um, and, you know, we were just... I was just, like, in... And included in the club of the Fabulous Four. You know, yeah. it was just wonderful to be around and, and be able to play the volleyball of jokes with them and whatnot. So I, I would never want that to end. I just never want that to end. And so, Ponfar. Ponfar. Y'all got that. Hashtag Ponfar. Till in Ponfar. All right. So let's get let that the, trending. Let the Reddit fly. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, I've got a question for you that I just have to ask you about for personal interest. What's up with this, you being a barker for this Romany equestrian show? Look, what? y'all, I got to take You're John, carny? Sorry. You're carny? I'm a carny. I was. I was. It's in the past now. I can always bring it back. <laughs> You're all marks. Uh, if you know what that means, good job. Uh, so I, 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 oh gosh, in between working for Disney World and doing shows in Vegas, I like went on tour right. like with one a... Does. Romanian family equestrian show. Like you do. Like you do. Uh, where we did a bunch of rent fairs and different types of festivals. And, you know, it was all, they were doing like backflips off of the horses, juggling machetes and fire. Like you do. Like you do. <laughs> uh, I was not. I was just like the, you know, hello, lords. Of light, you know, like the, the, the winch. Uh, I was basically the, the, the butt of their insults. I was the only woman. And they were just like, you know, back to the kitchens. And I'd just be like, slip into something more comfortable, sir, like a coma. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was my carny days. Uh, we actually got into like, <laughs> like a war with the carnies. Long story, but... <laughs> They like the, the, the actual carnies of like the, the, the fairs and the festivals and they like they came to the stables for the horses and we were like st- like standing at the horses with like swords. I was like, this is not what I signed up for. Oh my God. I really think like three months I was like after three months, I was like, I think I'm good. I, this has been an experience. I'm gonna move to Vegas. That was my most yeah, that was the reasonable uh, Yes, that was the I'm gonna go to simpler life. I'm gonna go to a simpler life and be a Vegas, Vegas showgirl. <laughs> Uh, working the Star Trek experience and Tony and Tina's wedding and singing with 
three bands that do not involve swords. I love that show. I was in it for years. Oh, my God. Orlando, Vegas. Yeah. Which we just, by the way, sorry, tangent. We, we just, just figured met. out. No. Oh. Well, we, not, we didn't be, <laughs> we just found out that we met before, but. I gave you a plant. You gave me a plant. <laughs> oh, my God. It was at the Crazy Ex-Girlfriend rap party. Oh and she's um, like, you gave me a plant. I showed up. <laughs> I crashed it. I, I climbed the fence. <laughs> this is like not. a theme. I did not. No, no, no. I, I no. climbed the fence. I, yeah, I'm, I'm a very good climber when I need to be. And I was like, I need to make sure they know that I'm here. No, um, uh, an ex of mine worked, worked in post-production and took me as this plus one. And you gave me a... I gave her a succulent. A succulent <laughs> saying, I kill all plants. Take this. this. And I said, and then it was dead like the next day. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> She gave me a responsibility and I have failed. <laughs> and then and then I just kinda like put it away and was like, goodbye. And, like sent it off like in a Viking ship. <laughs> blew it up. Oh my gosh. Um it was so a we're little, lifelong little Viking now. I know. Now. Yeah, we obviously had lots of catching up to do on Fact the and fiction <laughs> is all a blur in my life. But yes, I was a barker. Which I don't but I wasn't a barker. That's I don't know who put it in that words. It's on my Wikipedia page. And I'm like, how do I fix this? That's how do why, I just say... That's what I had to ask you. I'm yeah. like, this is crazy. This sounds like nuts. I mean, but it sounds really interesting too, so... Did you know that there is a carny language? I'm terrible at speaking it, but I can understand it. So if someone can say something in carny, I understand it, but I don't know how to word it. Wow. It's a real language. It's like pig Latin, but more complicated. Did not know that. Yes. Oh, my God. I learned that from the original Ronald McDonald, because I know a lot of clowns. <laughs> <laughs> I play poker with a bunch of magicians and clowns and parties, oh you guys. This play is... poker with magicians? I do. It, we have an honor system. We do. I work at the Magic Castle. It's a thing. Yes. I do. A lot of magicians. Anywho. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Are we ready for some audience yes. questions? Oh, please. Yeah. Okay. Please stop me talking. Okay, so you guys want to line up on the side over here. Everybody just line up on the side. Um, and uh, we have somebody with a microphone, right? By the way, this is my first con, everyone. <laughs> kind of, ever. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I have been... I mean, the minute to Lynn was a thing, or I was like Lamont's, like this little small role, and then I had one computer line in, in Lower Decks, and I was like, let's get me the cons, and everyone's like, calm down. <laughs> and then uh, to Lynn happened, and I, I'm working with Cool Water Productions, Derek Mackey and Tyler over Woo-hoo! here, and it's just the warmest welcome, and I've been ready to meet you guys and yes. celebrate all things Star Trek. So thank you for having you me. You are so spoiled because, again, the Star Trek conventions are the best. Just skip the others. Skip Don't. the others. <laughs> Don't tell the others. I said that. She speaks truth. It's true. The Trekkies are the best. I, I concur. So uh, Hi, my question... Yep. So my question is for Gabrielle. Now, Bonnie mentioned the fast-paced speed of Lower Decks. So my question is... When you guys get into the vocal booth to record, did they literally tell you, speak as fast as possible, or did the speed and fast-paced nature come naturally? Um, I think it's a little bit of both, sometimes, um, because you do audition. I mean, I auditioned for Talin, and um, I think my pacing was appropriate, at least at that point. Um, The first episode of Talin, um, Wedge Dooge, uh, was very curated just with kit gloves by Mike and all the producers were there. So it was wonderful to feel taken care of to find the pacing together because Vulcan, as we know, does have its, its vocabulary. It has its speed. And then like, what is that in a comedy world of Mike McMahon, right? And Star Trek, you got to abide by a lot of rules that have been set in stone for decades. It feels so um, it was really nice to be part of that project. I mean, part of doing that together. But I will say um, a lot of the experience is, let's just take a whack at it. Let's see what happens. Let's just read it. We just, me and the producer, not any actors. So um, David is doing everyone else's lines. And then we'll be like, okay, fine. Let's just pick it up a little bit. Just pick up the pace, basically, is the phrase that is said most times versus, can you just be faster and funnier? Like, an actor... <laughs> Can typically not respond well to that, but um, for do Talin, it better. can you just do it better? Can you be funnier? But um, it, it definitely 
because I booked it and I was able to see what Tawny set the tone. You know, I auditioned for Mariner. Like, that was my first audition. Had one call back for it. And I remember Mike being, can you be faster? Can you try it this way? And I remember leaving that audition like, (laughs) didn't book that. And then you see Tawny and you hear her and you're like, exactly. That's exactly what he said. That's exactly what she should be. She, She is Mariner. So she sets the tone. You learn it as, as an artist. You learn the world. And so I was able to do a little research and then add my Spock Vulcan spin. <laughs> like that. Wicked Spock. I do a lot of this in the room. I'm like, fascinating, curious, curious. So yes, that's my long answer. Thanks, Vince. Love it. Thank you. Hi. So- Hi. So my question is because uh, Gabrielle mentioned uh, <laughs> the potential for Talent. Fun par. Yeah, fun par. Uh, so my question, and Bonnie, you can take this one too. Oh, boy. Can't wait. F. Mary Kill Star Trek uh, characters. Oh, fuck Mary Kill? Yeah. Oh, oh. There's Star so many Trek. characters. How do we break it down? Oh, oh. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to get the names wait. right, but thank God all of you are here. Okay. Okay. First contact. Oh, oh, oh. That, that, this is his question. Sorry. Oh, we are this being is getting general. hard. Okay, I would marry all the whales. No, I'm kidding. The killer whales. <laughs> you saved them. It's great. They're so sweet. Aww, like I just love that. Um, that's like my favorite movie. Um, I my would, favorite too. The one with the whale. Yes. Star Trek Four. Um, I have to say, I would probably fuck. Um, what's his name from the 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 villain in um, Nexus? What's his name? Oh, yes, sexy and conflicting. Yes, <laughs> he can shoot me with the beam any day. You like the bad boy? I like the bad boy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, who would I marry? Who would I marry? Who would I marry? I'm going with Scotty because I'm a sucker for a Scottish accent. <laughs> A man in a kilt with a brogue. Hello. You know, I mean... And then I, we can go on the holodeck and play Outlander. <laughs> what? I like this. It's a, yes. Yeah, look, I'm looking for some period piece action here, okay? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, you know... Are there kids in here? I am so I really, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really trust Jordy. I really trust oh, him. That's a good answer. And that, you know, the head, you know, I used to walk around with a headband in front of my eyes all the time as a kid. I remember thinking, I was like, how does he do it? I did that as an adult. (laughs) I was was just like, let me test this out. So I would say, you know, it's just every time, like now as an actor, when you watch it later, you're like, Jordy had all the the technical exposition of the episode. So you get to like learn what we're dealing with, you know? And so that's like kind of marrying kind for me. It's like, you know, someone that you feel grounded with. Yeah. Who would you? Oh, gosh. Fall? This is hard. Oh, do. Oh, uh, Make love mm. to. Okay. Pond Far. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, if Pon Far's in, in, on the table, <laughs> maybe Spock. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I will say, it's Spock and Data are two of my favorite Star Trek characters, and I'm also a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, so I'm just attracted to intelligent, emotionless, <laughs> <laughs> like, unavailable men, apparently. <laughs> uh, that's my goal in life. That's why I have a cat. Uh, who am I going to kill? Oh, uh, oh gosh. I, I mean, the easy answer would be, Khan, but I want to be... I wanna be Better. I want to think of something more clever. Not Barkley. <laughs> but it's close. It's very close. Word. <laughs> Although, yeah. I will say, if I ever get a dog, uh, like, to myself, and Lieutenant Barkley would be the name. You know, I just killed a bee this big in our kitchen the other day. Like, he oh was God. huge. And my husband kills all the bugs. Like, all the bugs. Except bees. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, like, not doing bees. And yeah. so, he's like, seen Bridgerton. I got, um, I got like this like vegetable produce box, right? And I was like, whoa, you know what I mean? And like totally like, I got to kill this bee. So if I had to kill anything, you might be offended. I will kill Boopsie. Oh, oh good answer. I, I really don't want to kill Not that I want to, but I will. Yes. yes. Cause I feel I will guilty. will kill Boopsie because Boopsie will kill me. Oh, Boopsie. But like, you're so cute, Moopsie. but I will kill you. 
So, I mean, you asked. You asked the question. It's a tough one. <laughs> that Thank was good. You. That was a good question. <laughs> Moopsie, stay over there, please. <laughs> Hi. Oh, um, Borg Queen. I'd kill the Borg Queen. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, so you both mentioned how you try to, you know, preserve and take care of your voice, which obviously is very important. But um, nevertheless, have you had an incident where either they wanted you to do such extremes or just keep going and going for so long that you did have a problem with your voice? And if so, how did you recover or take care of it? <laughs> Uh, not really with Star Trek, but yeah. yes, with with other projects. And you have to you have to not be afraid to speak up and say, "Hey, I if we continue this, I will not have the integrity to keep going." Uh, it's gotten a lot better with like unions getting involved and different things like that. They have to put time limits on things. Uh, when you do like a video game or a fighting like scene session, they always put the, the heavy screaming and stuff towards the end. So you're not fatigued throughout the day. Um, but I mean, as someone who is a voiceover actor and a singer, I, I, I suffer from vocal problems all the time, just from overuse and abuse. And I talk a lot in case y'all didn't know, <laughs> wild to think about, but, uh, it's just all about knowing your body, knowing what your limits are. Um, hot tea, vocal rest. Uh, there is a, if you look up Chinese soap, th- soap, Chinese throat syrup online, the first thing that will come up is this syrup I can't pronounce, but it's in a red jar. It looks like black tar, and we call it Hulk Stand juice. Right there, what? Lopot? No, no, that's not it. It's a lot of words that I. I'm terrible, but I will, you know, I'll find me at my table. I will show you a picture of it. It's, it's like a miracle elixir. It tastes like sweet minty licorice and it's very good. And it, it, we call it Hulk juice because the person who did the voice of the Hulk in the cartoons back in the day discovered it and would like take, take uh, spoonfuls of it and it would save him and you would get through all those screaming scenes. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? I do. It's so do. good. There's this also this one bodega in New York it's like Starlight Diner that saved my yeah. voice. They closed recently, right? Oh, no. They saved my voice for my Broadway shows all the time. And there was something in that honey tea. Something in that. And I would bring it, it in my the cases. The it was probably the syrup. <laughs> I, you, you put it in hot water and it, it was becomes Korean. Tea. It was something Korean, though. I mean, it was wow. mwah, just a miracle. So, yes. I love it. I have lost my voice only teaching versus acting and uh, singing or whatever. Yeah, children. I, children, children make us lose things. <laughs> no, but and, and it's when I was, like, just recovering from a cold and going back too soon. So I would say you learn your lesson because then I had laryngitis for three weeks. Um, the last show on Broadway that I did, kind of a cold, like, progressed into different variations of flus and sinus infections. And I remember having to just beg to go to work and just lip sync. I was like, I, my, my, my sick leave days are over. They're washed out. Can I please come? And I would try to just be there physically. So those days do happen. And you just got to reschedule and be, be kind to yourself and heal. So luckily with a, um, voiceover, we just, you know, it's a quicker, easier reschedule. So it's definitely worth it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Good question. Uh, hello. A kilt. Yes. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, wrong team, sorry. Um, considering uh, your previous and current experience with Trek, with Lower Decks, with Prodigy, Shield of Tomorrow, that one crazy lasers and feelings show that you did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, you, what, if you were to, uh, to pitch a Star Trek show, what do you think you would want to explore? NDA. Because <laughs> I'm trying. All right, now. We'll talk. I later. mean, I'm all about the musical. I'm a Broadway broad, yes. first and foremost. So. Oh my God, a Star Trek musical. Yeah, like, just show. Like, just like a musical show. Wait, did you see Khan the musical? Oh I was musical. the computer. I've been on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> it was like two lines, but I was there. I was there. no Khan the musical. Have you seen it? It was so funny. I'm not. Oh, it was in New York. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it was so funny. Anyway. Yes, that. Let's put that. Let's do that. A musical. I love it. 
cool. We're gonna, um, we're gonna work you guys are it. doing great on time. We got about like sure. five minutes left. Okay, okay perfect. Uh, Gabrielle just wanted to know what was your favorite song in Crazy Ex Girlfriend? On Crazy Ex Girlfriend, like that I did. It's all about me. Um, or either any song? both. Um, oh man, the one that keeps me up at night laughing the most is um, I had a stroke. I had a stroke. It's a uh, it's it's a uh, makey makeover. It's this like kind of like um, this random. That's the show, guys. If you don't know, it's, it's so random good. and and dark. I highly and, encourage and you guys to watch it. Love story to mental health. Um, yes, yes, growth and um, journey. And that one for some reason makes me laugh all night long. Like it's just it's a makey makeover. She's she's like kind of having her her break point that everything's fine when it's not. And it's um oh Mickey you're so fine. It's like a spoof off of that. Um, I am a disco queen, so we'll never have problems again is also one of my favorites. But one of my favorites to do was um, with Pat Oswald. Excuse me? Um, No. Pat... um, Pat Oswald. No. (laughs) I was like, wow! I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his last name. He was also Remy in um, The Rat. Uh, Yes. Who said it? Right, that's what I said, right? Maybe? Um, anyway, um, uh, The Cringe. It's a, it's, it's a spoof, a parody song off of um, The Monster Mash. And it's all about like having cringy moments in your life that you are like, ooh, that was really awkward. And we did shoot at a graveyard um, overnight. And I remember talking to my mom, like saying, good night, we're going to be here till five in the morning and everything. And she's like, so what are you guys doing tonight? I was like, oh, we're doing that. Um, we had like these skeleton outfits, super fun, lots of green lighting, you know, the whole thing. And my mom was like, oh, where are you guys shooting? I was like, we're on location. She's like, where? I said, we're going, we're going to shoot at a graveyard. And she went, oh, well, be careful. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Thank you. Please pray for me. So, um, that's one of my favorite ones, the cringe for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, a Hi. real quick question for Gabrielle Ruiz. Are you a main cast member in LDS season five? Because Talyn deserves it. Oh, thank you. I am a main cat. No, I'm still in the same contract. I'm a, I'm a very grateful recurring guest star. She's a main character in her heart. In your hearts. <laughs> right. Yes, She's you know, a- and, and Valencia was that too. So I feel like that's my, that's my fate in my career that, you know, they, they, they find out they're in love with me. Those are the ones people remember. Yeah. I, and, I think. And, you know, that character isn't known to be beloved until it's, you know, on its feet and being established with the other characters and also, you know, letting the jokes land the way they do. So I'm happy just to be involved. Thank you. I'm just happy to be nominated. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly the vibe. A couple more minutes. Let's see if we can get we can through do it. the. We can do it. Hi. So, um, I was just going to ask the the Strange New Worlds crossover with Lower Decks. It's uncanny how much the voice actors resembled their I characters. Know, right? Yeah, and I just wanted to know if if that's intentional. Like, does which comes first, the actor's face or the character's face? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I'm definitely not in charge. <laughs> but I think I could totally rock the bob and that Absolutely. blue headband, yes. you know, Absolutely. and and the attitude and the stank face. Yep. Um, so I would I would love. To, I mean, this is not your question, but I'd love to cross over. But um, I would think it's a little bit of both. I I feel like on your podcast, uh, Tawny talked about you know the hair, the hair of right. the the mother and daughter dynamic. Yes, yes, and like you know they made sure that it really fit Don's look as well as you know. Um, Tawny's really beautiful big hair and fluffy, you know, she has a really fluffy black hair and they made sure the ponytail of, of Mariner was like that as well. It changed because Tawny booked it. Yeah. I would make a great console as well. Just so. <laughs> okay, one more? Okay, one more question, unfortunately. I'm so sorry, my Find love. Find us at our table. Yes. Okay. Um, so my question, sorry, my question is um, for you. It's, you, I know you've done a lot of video game work as well as um, like TV and stuff. Yeah. Is there any difference between recording for a video game and recording for... 100%. What? So a lot of the video games, especially the ones I'm in that come from Japan and overseas, like Street Fighter, Mega Man, Fire Emblem, Code Vein, they, uh, and the anime as well comes from overseas. Um, and the animation's already done. The voices are already done in, in Japanese, in, in Korean, and whatever language they're originally from 
and it's my job to match it as best as possible. Again, like I was saying earlier with the being a musician, it's like a rhythm game. And what they give you, they'll give you like a paragraph and the mouth is going like this. And that's all you got. And I'm just like, there is no way. The, who translated this? She Please, flaps I need my mouth. chicken noodle soup. Yeah, and, and, and I'm just kind of like, there's no way this fits. So it's a lot of uh, flexibility to where you have to match the, um, you know, the flap. You have to match the timing. You have to, there's so much more you have to think about that you kind of, and you have to focus on acting and make sure you're giving a, a great performance. So it's a lot, it piles up. With animation, uh, especially like working with Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, you know, I'm sure the same with Lower Decks, we get a lot more freedom because it's mostly an animatic form. And the animation hasn't been finalized yet. So, uh, and I was very lucky to do all the scratch voice for like Jane Wayne and Gwen. So I went in and recorded like everybody's voice before the actors got in to record. So the animators would have something to work with and, and have something, you know. So I did a lot of Jane Way. And if, if somebody goes in and just records the line, like a, like a storyboard artist or somebody who doesn't get her cadence and her energy behind it, uh, you're going to lose a lot of that. The animators are just going to record... Like, hello, this is the protostar. You know, hello, this is the protostar. You know, so you, you have to match the energy and it's a lot more freedom with your acting because the animators then match it to you instead of you trying to match another performance in a, in a different language, if that makes sense. What was the question? <laughs> yes, the answer is 42. <laughs> Well, everybody, I want to thank you all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We love you. This might be my last time to say this in person to you. We love you. You're such a wonderful addition to, to Lower Decks. You know. Honestly, honestly, thank you so much. And... Just like all of Star Trek, Lower Decks will always live long and prosper. Oh, absolutely. Right? Let me tell you. No matter what happens. But do pitch the movie. I would love to. I am available. And we're serious about saving Lower Decks, right, y'all? Yes. Yes. Bonnie, we love you. You are Thank such you. a wonderful addition to the Trek family, Thank and you're just you. such a beautiful human being. Y'all with such are a stuck great with heart, me no matter so. what happens to Prodigy, so sorry. <laughs> and I want to thank you both for doing the panel. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank Love you all you so too. much. <laughs> Live logs and proper. You guys smile. We're going to take a photo with you guys as well. Oh, oh yeah. panel photo, if you don't want my. Oh, wait. Yeah. Like, uh, don't leave yet. We want to take a picture with all of you. Put on your picture face. Okay. Did I tell you or did I tell you that that was absolutely hilarious? Oh, my gosh. Wow. (laughs) That got off the rails a few times. Oops. And the funny thing was, to me, I was so nervous going into this. <laughs> and I don't know if you could hear it, really. But, you know, I was watching it, like, when, when she got up on the stage and everybody said, oh, it's sci-fi, says it to me. And the whole audience went, yay! And to me, turned around like, what? <laughs> me? <laughs> yes, you, sis, you. Oh, man, so good. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was just, you know, everything like that. Everything was like that at Trek Long Island. I mean, it just brings out the good vibes. It's a good vibe spot, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to go back. I, I really do enjoy that that um, venue. I love the, uh, I just love the good feelings that go on there. You know, um, uh, Stephanie is such a good human. You know, she wants everything to be right. She just comes at it from such a great place. Um, she embodies uh, the Trek, you know, morals, the IDIC. She definitely, oh, yeah. you know, she she puts that in everything she does. And she's a really good friend. So I'm really proud of her. Um, and I'm yeah. glad this has become a success for her. She had a very diverse group of, of mm-hmm. stars there that, you know, brings out the diversity in all and everybody. I mean, everybody yeah. wanted to see everybody. Yeah. So it was just really great. So. Okay. I, I think a lot of, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just said kudos yeah, to Stephanie. I, I think a lot of uh, um, con directors 
say they have a diverse uh, lineup, but you really need to take notice of what Stephanie is doing um, because she's definitely talking IDIC, but she's putting it into action. Mm -hmm. And when you bring all those diverse fans, you uh, diverse artists, talent, you're going to have diverse fans show up. Right. You know, we saw it on the Trek, the Trek cruise uh, this year. They had a diverse lineup. And I mean, I don't know how many times people say I came because of all of the diversity on the, on the lineup, you know, and we had said it more than once that there are so many different types of people here that we've Wait. never that we've never seen before. So kudos, as you said, to Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. Well. So where can everyone find us, Yvette? You can find us at sci-fi sisters.com. That's S-Y-F-Y-S-I-S-T-A-S dot -S com. Join us on the mothership. That's M-U-T-H-A-S-H-I-P. And the Sci-Fi Sisters Book Club, both on Facebook. On Instagram, TikToks, and threads, sci-fi dot sisters. And we are also on the platform formerly known as Twitter at Sci-Fi Sisters. For more interviews in our infamous Top 10 series, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sci-Fi Sisters, Inc. Become a patron of Sci-Fi Sisters today at patreon.com forward slash Sci-Fi Sisters. The Trek Geeks Network's presenting sponsor is Fansets. Go to fansets.com for pins and memorabilia from all your favorite franchises. Visit fansets.com and use Trek Geeks, all caps, for your exclusive 10% discount. After listening to this podcast, please rate us and write a review. We may just read it on an upcoming episode. And we'd also like to thank our associate producers, Thayla Marge, Aaron Dramira, and Stephanie Baker. A shout out to the baddest engineer, Dose the Anonymous One. He's responsible for all of our music and production. So if you need his services, contact him on Instagram at dose underscore the anonymous underscore one. And until next time, peace, love, and hair grease. Bye.